The Scottish people decided to stay in the family. To independence, yes to the union. And what a turnout, over 84%. It broke records. More than 4 million people were registered to vote. Around 400,000 of them are non-Scots, living in Scotland, Britons, immigrants, and so on. But almost 2 million Scottish people were banned from voting. That's because they live either elsewhere in the UK or outside the country. Now, could 2 million Scots have swayed the outcome? Let's ask Max Kaiser, host of The Kaiser Report. He joins us in the now tonight, live from London. Max, Scott said yes to the union. Does this surprise you? It's remarkable that a country, given the opportunity to be independent, chose to be part of a confederation of countries like the United Kingdom when there was so much on offer with independence. Scotland could have been one of the highest GDP per capita countries in the world. Uh, they could have really uh, done remarkably well as an independent country, but um, really, um, shame shamefully, they chose to uh, not go forward and to instead be tethered to the, the corrupt business as usual in Westminster. Why, if there would have been such a plus of leaving the union, didn't Scots why didn't the Yes campaign convince them of the economic benefits? Well, I think the vote broke down uh, demographically. So the uh, under 25 crowd were overwhelmingly yes. Uh, as the demographics got older, uh, 45 plus, uh, that group voted no. So I think we see this, Anissa, around the world where there's an intergenerational conflict going on. The older generations who rely on the younger generation to supply them with their pension benefits, they don't want to upset that system. They don't want to be bothered by having to have any interruption in their uh, monthly uh, you know, pension checks. Uh, so they just sat back and said, we couldn't really be bothered uh, with, even though the next generation and the generation of that would, in, would inherit a remarkably prosperous country. Uh, the older generation really sold out the younger generation. Well, Cameron says that Scots, and this was his main argument during the campaign, would be safer in the UK, especially financially. Why did people buy it? Well, they threatened the Scots, uh, particularly the banks like Royal Bank of Scotland and others. They mounted threats. They said they would leave. Uh, they claimed that the economy would collapse. We saw something similar back in 2008, remember, during the period when Wall Street had to be bailed out and the TARP funds needed to be cleared. There was a vote that voted against TARP and then the markets crashed and then they had another vote and they voted for TARP. So banks understand that they can threaten people and they have the ability to cut them off from their funding and there's very little competition in the banking sector. So once the banks were allowed to openly threat the Scottish people and Cameron supported those threats uh, and there, nobody stood up for the Scottish people uh, in, uh, to, to put, to, to over, to, to come up with an argument against those threats. And those arguments were, were out there, but they were, they were not being broadcast on the mainstream media outlets here in the UK. Uh, so the people of Scotland were faced uh, kind of an echo chamber of threats and consequently they made a horrible decision. Max Kaiser says horrible decision on Scotland, non-independence. Live with us from London. Thanks so much, Max. Sure.